Hey everybody, welcome to Skeeter's Ridge. Today we are going to make some soap. Um, I've had a few people ask me um, about uh, making soap using the goat's milk. Um, so I figured today would be a good day to do that. Um, we've got market season coming up really soon. Um, we've got arts and craft shows coming up and so that's really where the the bulk of our um, our sales come from uh, coming up in the spring and the summer so we got to get started making soap because it takes uh, about four weeks to cure so this isn't really something that you can just uh, whip up overnight and uh, and then you know just be able to use it the next day so uh, let's get started um, I'm going to get a few things set up and um, we'll start making soap. Okay, so here I have a um, solid block of goat milk um, and we will go over why it is frozen in just a few minutes. Um, but I have a frozen block of goat milk and it is sitting in an ice bath. Um, just ice, cold water. Uh, and I'll go over why we do that in just a minute. Um, I also have, so I went ahead and melted all of my oils uh, for the sake of time because I want my oils to be at room temperature. Um, and again, I'll go over that in just a few minutes, but I just wanted you to see that I have already melted my oils. And I use a combination of palm, coconut, olive, and avocado oils. Um, you can pick whatever kind of oils you want to. You can use lard if you want to. Um, there is an app that you can download. It's called Saponify. S-A-P-O-N-I-F-Y. Saponify. Um, and you can pick the oils that you want to use. And it will help you calculate how much of those oils to use with your lye. Um, now, I do use lye in all of my soaps. All of my soaps are lye. Uh, people do ask that all the time. Is it a lye soap? Yes, it is a lye soap. Uh, when you are working with lye, and I need for you to stop whatever you're doing, and please hear me when I tell you this. Uh, lye is poison it is caustic it is harmful or fatal if swallowed and you see the skull and crossbones they're not joking um, if you are working with lye you need to make sure that you have gloves long sleeves and some kind of eye protection because if it gets on your skin it will melt your skin right off your bones and I'm not even joking it hurts really bad so with that being said you also need to make sure that you have some apple cider vinegar somewhere because if it does get on your skin and you'll know it almost instantly it'll start burning um, you need to just pour some of that apple cider vinegar onto your skin and it will neutralize that burning sensation. Um, and you'll have, if enough of it gets on your skin, you'll have a little blister. Um, but you need to make sure that, you know, you get that off of your skin as quickly as possible with the apple cider vinegar. Um, if by chance, you do happen to ingest it or inhale it in for some reason you need to seek immediate medical attention please if you don't hear anything else I say on this video please hear that moving on that's your PSA for today um, so today we are going to make a Anjou pear, can you see that? Scented goat milk soap. And we've got a couple of colors that we're going to add to it. 
um, and I'll show you how to do that. This is going to be really pretty. Um, so we also have, uh, I have my molds here, and we'll go over those in a minute too. The, uh, they have a silicone insert, uh, which makes it easier to actually get the soap out of once we've uh, cured it. And then, um, <clears throat> so I've got some just standard measuring cups. Now all the stuff that you see here that I'm using, uh, I do not use for cooking. This is strictly for making soap. And that's something that you need to make sure you understand is once you start using this stuff to make soap with, um, you don't need to wash it and then go bake a cake or something with it. Uh, this needs to be strictly for soap making only because uh, you're using lye and you don't want that in your soap. Um, I also have a stick blender here. Um, you can pick this up anywhere. They have them on Amazon. All the big box stores have them. Um, and they range anywhere from, I don't know, 15 to 50 bucks. So just be aware of that. Um, but we're going to go ahead and measure up um, our lye that's going to mix with our goat's milk. And uh, this is going to be a slow process because you don't want to scorch your goat's milk. So what we're going to do, I'm going to very carefully <clears throat> measure out uh, my lye and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I have my gloves on and as you can see I have tucked my sleeves down into my gloves. That way there's no gap between my sleeve and my glove where the lye can splash up and burn me. Um, I also have my safety glasses that I will be wearing um, and I probably won't take these off until the end of the video. <coughs> So right now what we're going to do is we are going to, um, now what we're going to do is we're going to measure our lie. Um, so I am looking for 10.3 ounces of lie. And they make this thing very difficult to open on purpose so that your children cannot just come running in here and open it. So we want 10.3 ounces. And I'm pouring this very slowly so that it doesn't bounce around everywhere. Because it's kind of like little beads. And it will bounce. Bounce out of the cup and everything. Okay. All right. So there we have our 10.3 ounces of lye. Now, our next step that we're going to do, uh, very carefully, we're going to start um, pouring this onto our goat's milk. This needs to be a very slow process. Um, and the reason being, <clears throat> when the lye mixes with a liquid, 
even in a frozen state. When the lime mixes with a liquid, it will start to heat up. And it will heat up very quickly and it gets very hot. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, this is going to be a slow process uh, because if you just dump this whole thing of lye onto your goat's milk, it's going to scorch. It'll scorch your goat's milk and it'll be ruined. Um, it will have a horrible, horrible smell. Um, it will change to a very nasty looking brown color. Um, and so you've just wasted perfectly good goat's milk. Um, and if you've ever milked a goat, it's uh, way harder than it looks. And there's more to it than what you think. So, <clears throat> we're just going to go very slowly with that. Um, we're going to let that sit and start to melt. Um, and you'll see it in just a minute. It will start to melt and it'll slide like an avalanche um, off that goat's milk. <clears throat> so, while we're waiting on that, we're going to go ahead and measure up our fragrance oil, and we're also going to go ahead and get our colors mixed. So, let's go around over here so that uh, you can maybe see some of that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, <clears throat> I've got the green, yellow, and the base of our soap is going to be white. So what we're going to do is just, <clears throat> so here's the white. Uh, this is uh, titanium dioxide powder. Um, this is what we will use to color it white. Now this is not going to affect the end result of our soap. Um, and I have this little spoon. So you always mix with oil. Um, I have oil based colors. So I'm going to take a spoonful of that. I'm probably actually going to take a little more because I really want this white to pop. So we've got that. And we're also going to mix our yellow in our green and that's going to be the color scheme for our Anjou Pear scented soap. So I'm just going to take, this measures out to be about a teaspoon. So I got a little less than a teaspoon because this is just going to be an accent color and the same with the green it's just going to be an accent color Oops. All right. and then let me get this out and then we're going to take our green Ooh, that's a pretty green. Take our green and it's going to go in this other cup. So now we've got white, yellow, and green as our color scheme. And we're going to mix these uh, with olive oil.
All right, so we have our olive oil here. <clears throat> I have no idea how this video is even going to turn out. I'm not used to making videos inside the inside our tiny little trailer, so I don't really know how it's going to turn out, but we're just going to wing it. I mean, that's pretty much what we do with everything, right? Just We're just kind of winging it. Hopefully it'll turn out. At least we'll have some pretty soap. And then we're going to mix in the white here. Alright. So there's that. And make sure you put the lids back on your stuff when you get done. Because it's very easy to knock it over. Um, and then you've wasted it. And this stuff is not cheap. And it's getting more expensive <coughs> as time goes on. So I have a little... Uh, a little whisker mixer. I'm not real sure what you call it. A little whisking mixer. It's battery powered. And so we're just going to dip it in here. Give us a little stir. And then we'll let the little whisker do its thing. So we're going to go ahead and just... And you want to start with... If you're doing multiple colors, you want to start with the lightest color and move to the darkest color. That way, uh, you're not messing up your colors. So you always want to start with the lightest and move to the darkest. So here we've got, there's our yellow. Just going to do that. A little whisk, a little stir. Um, be careful with this little thing because it has been known to send your powder flying. Same with the green. The lighting in here is horrible. I'm so sorry, y'all. Okay, so we got our colors mixed up. And so now we're going to out our fragrance. So for this batch of soap I want about two and a half ounces of the fragrance. So we're just gonna measure this out. I wish I could smell this. It smells so good. This is a really, really great summer, spring, summer scent. Um, I sell a lot of it. It's even nice going into the fall. Just that crisp pear scent is really nice. Um, Alright, so let's go back over here now. We're going to check on the progress of our goat's milk with the lie. It's starting to come along. I don't know how well y'all can see that. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to add a little bit more lye now to the goat milk. Let it start melting that goat's milk. So, I know it's kind of weird, we're using lye, which can kill us, and we're going to make soap with it and put it all over our body so we can bathe with it. Isn't that crazy? Um, so, <clears throat> this is going to go through a process called saponification. And basically what that means is, so we are combining our lye and our goat's milk 
together. We are going to very carefully add this to our oil mixture that I've already melted that I just told you about. <clears throat> so after 24 hours the oils have neutralized the harmful effects of life. So after 24 hours, technically after 24 hours, you can use this soap if you wanted to. Um, it's going to be very mushy. It's not going to last but maybe a day or so. So <clears throat> that's why you have to let it sit and cure um, for like four weeks. And what that does is, so once it's gone through the saponification process after 24 hours, um, the lye has been neutralized. So here we are, it's been about, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes. Um, and I'm about halfway through the lye that I poured up. Um, so I would say this is probably going to take maybe another 10 minutes before it's completely melted, but you see how it's staying that milky color, which means the temperature is staying low, the milk is not scorching, it's not burning, it's uh, doing exactly what I need it to do in order for this soak to work out. So we're just going to keep mixing very slowly. We're going to keep incorporating our lye very gingerly. We are going to keep incorporating the lye. We'll just keep mixing it until it's all incorporated. Alright, so it's taken about 20 minutes to get all of the lye mixed into the goat's milk. So now we are ready to mix it with our oils over here. And I'm going to run it through a strainer just to catch any lye particles that may be left over. And there's a, there's a few right there. Because um, we don't want any of those lye particles to go down into the the oil mixture. So the saponification process has started. So now we're up against the clock. So you're going to take your stick blender, tap it, get all the bubbles out. Mm -hmm. And since we're going to be coloring this, I don't want to spend too much time with this stick blender because it is going to speed up the process. I just want to make sure that everything is incorporated. This is where you're going to add your fragrance. Very important because I have forgotten to add the fragrance a couple of times. And we're just going to gently mix that in. Um, you need to make sure that your fragrance does not cause rising because it will cause your soap to, it's okay, you just have to work really fast because it's going to cause your soap to speed up the tracing process. So we have that. I'm going to set that on a paper towel. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some of our soap mixture to our colors. And you want to make sure that you add your colors first before you add the white because you're just going to waste it. See how it's starting to rice a little bit? That's okay. That just means we need to hurry up. So I'm going to do about two cups of the yellow, two cups of the green. I'm going to stir this up a little bit because it is starting to move kind of quick. And at this point, the rest of the soap is going to be white. There's, 
and you'll see it change here in just a minute whenever I start mixing. So we're done with that. And the dog and the cats are fighting back there. No big deal. So this is going to turn into a really pretty creamy white. Now we are still, we're still okay. Um, we do not have any tracing going on. And you can tell that because the soap is not leaving any lines. So right now, this is still pretty soft. Um, you want it to be about the consistency of a thin pudding. That yellow is going to be so pretty. So once these start to heat up a little bit, you'll notice that the colors sometimes will morph and you're going to think, oh no, I've ruined it. But once it has completed its processing in the mold, it'll go back to your regular color. Like a lot of times yellows will morph into orange and you think, oh no, I've done it wrong. Don't fret, you'll be fine. All right. So what the uh, what we're gonna do in here is called a it's called an in the pot swirl. And basically, what we're gonna do this is still room temperature, so we're good. So basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our colors and we're going to let them drop down into our white. And you want to hold it up kind of high. That way your color reaches the bottom. Because this is going to start turning to pudding. Your colors are going to not want to go all the way down to the bottom. Now at this point, um, this soap can still burn you. And it can still cause harm. The lye is still active at this point. So you want to be careful when you're doing this that it doesn't splash up on you. Um, I, I can't even begin to explain to y'all the, the burning sensation from a lye burn. It's really pretty bad. So we're going to save a little bit of this because we're going to do a pretty little design on the top of the loaf once we get it poured in. So we're going to save a little bit. We got, okay, we can, it's a little too much, so we'll add some more to this. Alright, <clears throat> so we've got about half a cup um, of, the, of the colors saved. We'll do a little, pretty little design at the end. Uh -oh. Sorry, babe. Go ahead. So you want to keep checking to see how your soap is acting. Is that tracing a little where you can see? It's it? tracing. It's starting to trace just a little bit. So we'll give it a few more seconds. You want some of that? Yeah, you want it to be a little bit thicker. Um, you want it to be like a really thin, runny pudding consistency. So when you do your swirls, it makes a real pretty swirl and it doesn't just all kind of muffle in together. Delete. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which, I mean, is still a pretty swirl. But I would like for this to kind of look like marbling when I cut it. So we're just going to keep checking to see how it's doing. And this is really behaving very well. Kind of surprised. I thought that this would, with the pear fragrance, I thought that it would go a whole lot faster. Okay, so we've got, we've got a pretty good trace, I think. I don't want to wait too much longer. So what we're going to do is, like I said, this is called an in-the-pot swirl. So we're going to take our spatula. We're going to go, we're just going to dip it all the way down into one of the colors. 
and we're going to do a complete swirl around the outside of the uh, of the bowl the bucket and we're going to come out and then we're going to kind of move into the middle and we're going to do another circle around and we're just going to kind of go till it hits the middle and do a little swirl as we come out hmm. so when we pour it it should you never know until you really pour it and if you've done it right or really I guess until you cut it if if it's turned out the way you wanted it to um, but if you want if you want a more if you want more swirl do more swirl if you want less swirl do less swirl it's your soap do whatever you want to with it all right so let's go ahead and we're going to pour this in. It's still got a pretty thin, uh, a little bit of a thin consistency, but it is starting to put in a little more. All right. So let's go over here to our, to our mold. <clears throat> so I've got my two colors here that we're going to use for the top. Alright, so we're not going to be in a huge hurry to pour this. We're just going to kind of let it pour in itself. And we still have plenty of time. And you can do a circle as you're pouring. I know the colors are looking a little muddled, but once this goes through the process uh, it will it'll come together you'll see we're just going to keep pouring and these uh, silicone molds they're very forgiving um, you see it's kind of pushed in right there in the middle once we get this filled up it will push back out and that's the thing with these swirls like this. You really can't mess it up. Um, now there's some more intricate designs that I'll show you in another video. Um, some swirls, some hanger swirls and stuff like that. But for now we'll do this easy one. Alright, so we're going to... You want to get as much of this out as possible and you want to start moving a little faster because it is starting to set up a little bit I wish y'all could smell this it smells amazing we're going to do I'll let this sit for a second We'll do a pretty little swirl across the top of it with the yellow and green that we got left over. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay. So I think I've cleaned that out pretty good. Make sure you get it along the side there. All right. So let's do our our topper here. Yeah, this is starting to get pretty pretty puddingy. Puddingy is that a word? Okay. So we'll do the yellow first. So we're just gonna pour it down one side here. Because you see we've got the white in the middle right here, so that'll make it make a good swirl. We'll have a three color swirl. And there's no science to this. You can swirl it however you want to if you want to use a spoon. I like 
I use a chopstick. I haven't had Chinese food in a long time. That's pretty good. And if it gets, if the colors run into each other, that's okay too, because you're fixing to do a swirl on them anyway. Okay. So the yellow's done. Now we're going to do the green. Oh yeah, that's getting real good. Alright, so we got the white going down the middle, so we're going to do the green down this other side. And you see how it's starting to s just sit on top? <clears throat> that means it's uh, starting to uh, go through, it's starting to get very pudding like. We're moving beyond pudding at this point, uh, which means I need to be moving pretty fast. Um, And I've already cleared out a spot in my refrigerator. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a spot cleared out in your refrigerator before you start this. Because um, sometimes you're going to be in a hurry to get it in there. Because it's not always going to work out the way you want it to. Okay, here's my chopstick. So all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to, I'm just doing a swirl. And I just have the tip of the chopstick and if you want it to swirl more go back up in the other direction. At this point, because this soap is behaving so well, you can do as much or as little as you want. And that's it. So, what we're going to do to finish this off, um, I have this is 99% rubbing alcohol. Um, I'm going to spray this after I turn it on. I'm going to spray this over the top of the soap. This prevents soda ash. Um, <clears throat> soda ash, it turns the soap uh, ashy on top. Uh, it gets real flaky. So this is going to go this is going to go in the fridge just like this. I'm going to cover it with some parchment paper. So that also is going to reduce the soda ashing process. And yes, this goes in the refrigerator where we have all of our food and stuff. Um, at this point, it is not, it's not doing anything. It's just going to sit in here. Um, once I get a real shop, I will have a refrigerator dedicated to soap. But for now, this is what we use. And I've been doing it like this for years. So there you go. Um, this is our. This is how I make our goat's milk soap. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so it's been 24 hours with uh, our soaps in the refrigerator, um, going through their saponification process. Um, so now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and take them out of the uh, silicone molds that they're in. And we're going to let them sit on a, um, I just use cookie sheets, um, drying sheets, cooling sheets. There we go. I just use cooling sheets um, to let them sit on. That way the air circulates all the way around them. Um, and we'll let them sit, depending on how soft they are when I pull them out of the mold, 
Um, we will let them sit <clears throat> for another 24 hours or so um, before we try and cut them. So let's go ahead and get them out of the mold and see what they look like. All right, um, the lighting is not great in here. Um, it's very cloudy and overcast today because we have rain coming in in just a couple of hours. Uh, so, but this is the best room in the house for this because we have a dehumidifier back here in this room. Um, so that is just going to help this soap dry up. Um, and not retain all that excess moisture. Mm, sorry, you guys. Okay. Let's get this box out of the way. Okay. Um, okay. So, the colors turned out really pretty on this. I don't know if y'all can look at that. The colors really turned out nice. Um, this is a new green for me, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, so let's get it out of the mold and see what it looks like. Alright, so like I said, these little silicone molds, these are really great. Um, they're very forgiving when you're trying to get these big loaves out <clears throat> all at one time. Um, and all you want to do is just go loosen the sides. Uh-oh. One or the other. Okay. And we'll just peel it back. You just grab it from the middle right there and then you just peel the silicone mold all the way off and we're going to set it right here let's just uh, let's turn it this way I think it's going to be better hope y'all can see that There we go. So that's one. <clears throat> and see, these are just um, cookie cooling sheets. See, so you can, uh, so that way air will circulate all the way around uh, the loaf and uh, dry it evenly. Um, I wish y'all could smell this. It smells so delicious. So that's this is our pear, the Anjou pear uh, that we did yesterday together. Um, I went ahead and made another batch um, of the <clears throat> salty margarita. Um, the salty margarita is another uh, popular one. It's another fan favorite. Uh, I sell a lot of it. Um, and normally, so uh, this is one of those that I used to make with uh, beer. <clears throat> but like I said, we're uh, we're trying to move away from the beer soaps because the beer is getting so expensive, um, and I really don't want to have to keep raising prices on my bars of soap to offset. I'm trying to keep from having to do that. Okay, so. That's out of the box. <clears throat> um, these silicone molds, they're very easy to clean up too. Um, and you want to clean them in between batches so that, uh, <clears throat> so that you don't have salty margarita soap in your oatmeal honey soap. So, same as last time, I'm just going to run my hands down the side of that to loosen the silicone. 
and just grab it in the middle. I think my kettle is fixing to start screaming to y'all. I'm sorry. Oh, that, that turned out very good. Okay. Mm. Oh, this smells amazing. I wish y'all could smell this. It smells amazing. Oh my gosh, it makes, makes me want spring to get here really quick. Okay, so there we go. Both soaps are out. This salty margarita is still a little soft, so it may have to sit for two days before we cut it. Um, we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow what it looks like. Um, so other than that, uh, we'll just, we're just going to let them sit. Um, back here, I'm going to turn on the dehumidifier once once we're done here because it's kind of it's a little loud and obnoxious so um but yeah there's our our two soaps from yesterday we're getting there y'all um <clears throat> so this is the salty margarita that's the angie pear um so we will come back tomorrow and see if they're ready to cut and if so we will get to cutting Okay, everybody, um, it has been, it's actually been about four days since we made our Anjou Pear Soap. Isn't that swirl turn out really pretty? The colors turn out really pretty. Um, so now, what we're going to do is we are going to cut, um, cut our bars, cut into in, our individual bars, and, uh, We're going to see what the inside of it looks like because I'm really excited to see the inside. So you will be seeing this for the first time, same time that I see it. So I have no idea what this is going to look like on the inside. Um, I got my scale over here so that I can weigh my bars to make sure that they are all uh, weighing the same. Um, so this is my cutter here it's just a it's an individual slicer you can get them where it'll slice all the bars at one time but uh, this is just an individual cutter um, and I've got it preset so that it measures out to be the same size every time all right so uh, Without further ado, let's, uh, let's see what this is going to look like on the inside. Let me make sure. Oh, let me tighten this up a little bit. This is just a guitar string in case you can't hear it. Okay. Alright, first cut. <laughs> Still a little bit soft. I think it's going to be okay. Oh, that's pretty. There's some light swirls in there. So, after about four weeks, after this has had time to fully sit and cure, um, the colors will pop a little bit more. Um, like I said, it's still pretty soft. I'm kind of surprised at how soft it still is. Um, let's take it over here and lay it. Yep. <clears throat> so, let's, uh... Let's just keep going. Oh wow, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that turned out nice. It turned out pretty. 
I'm pretty happy with that. All these little pieces here you can just set aside. So at this point, the lie's been, the lie's neutralized. It's it's not harmful anymore. Um, so <laughs> the gloves to protect myself. Mm. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. It's nice. It's on. Um, so yeah. So we'll just uh, keep cutting until they're all cut up. Um, should end up with uh, about two dozen bars. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the uh, salty margarita right here too. Um, since we made them on the same day. And, uh, see what it looks like. I think it's going to be pretty cool. I just love the swirls on that one, though. So, um, once we get everything cut, once we get all the bars cut, um, I'm going to put them back uh, on, it, uh, on that uh, cooling rack, and then uh, they'll go back in that back room again with the dehumidifier, and uh, so they'll sit and cure for about four weeks, um, and uh, then they will be ready to use. Uh, they'll be listed in the Etsy shop. Um, I will post a link to the Etsy shop in the description. Um, please feel free to go check out our Etsy shop. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, make sure that uh, you like and subscribe to our channel. That would be awesome too. Um, we really do appreciate you guys watching us. Um, we really appreciate y'all following us and 
watching us on our homesteading journey. Um, please make sure that you tell our friend. Oh, oh, tell our friends. We've already told our friends. We need for you to tell your friends about our channel and uh, make sure that they like and subscribe to our channel as well. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for whatever else may be happening on the homestead. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.